Welcome to Assault Mode. Unlike Co-op Mode, Assault Mode has me actually playing against another player. Now, the rules for Assault Mode are, one player is designated as the attacker, that's me in this case, and the other player is the defender. The attacker has several objectives that he must complete on the map within the specified amount of time in order to win. The defender must stop the attacker, attacker from completing those objectives. In all six Assault Maps, I'm gonna be the attacker. Mostly because A, I want to show you strategies that the attacker might take when playing these maps, and B, for the first two Assault Maps, we get to play as Classic Ubo, or at least he's commanding us. You don't exactly play as Ubo, but wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so for this first map, I have to destroy two missile silos, a radar array, and then capture this HQ. All of the Assault Maps end in an HQ capture. Now, for, in all of the assault maps, both players have different battalions. Here I have a gunship. The Frontier player in this map does not have a gunship. Which allows... They have an anti-air vehicle, but I can just fly over the missile silo, sit behind it, and shoot it down. If the Western Frontier player doesn't see this coming, then he's pretty much lost the first part of the map already. And even then, he has to drive the anti-air vehicle all the way around to the back of the objective in order to shoot at the gunship. That's the thing about assault mode. Um, because both players have different battalions, this is not always 100% balanced. I mean, I did, my gunship did get shot down, but I was still able to take out one objective and seriously damage another. And I should also probably take out the MG towers before ordering my battalion to cross their paths. So yes, Assault Mode is not always 100% balanced. In fact, I would go far as to say all of the Assault maps are geared towards... Like, they favor the attacker. It's... I mean, skill can overcome this slant, but it's still not a cool thing to have such an obvious imbalance. But I guess you're... If, with both sides having different battalions and the map not being a mirror, basically, this was bound to happen. Still, I think this is a pretty okay map in spite of what I just talked about with the gunship here. Once the radar array and missile silos are destroyed, it's time to take out the HQ, and I unfortunately got shot down before I could send the gunship in to destroy all of the automatic guns. So we have to drive there slowly. Also, the point... Um, all of your units respawn after a certain amount of time on both sides. That's what the time limit there is for, is to end the map after a certain amount of time, which I am okay with. Now, each time you complete an objective, your respawn point will move up so that you're not taking, like, three or four minutes just to get your battalion up to where the enemy is. This has led to s spawn camping to a certain degree, but it's not really that severe. I mean, the enemy could just hang out by my spawn point and then just destroy all of my units as they reappear, but if they tried it, uh, I could sneak by and just, you know, capture their HQ with a single unit alone, but there are auto guns by the HQ here. There is also an anti-air tower. I'll have to take that out with my tank and then just shoot everyone up with the gunship. Now, HQ capturing is obviously a lot harder here because, you know, it's an, another player that's defending it, not just the AI anymore. I mean, I guess the AI could be defending it, but there... There are actually numerous, numerous strategies you can employ, i found, when taking down or defending a flag. See, as long as one of your, your units is capturing the flag, the enemy cannot send in an infantry to re-raise the flag. Likewise, if they, if one of their units is re-raising the flag, you can't start capturing again it again until all of the infantry re-raising the flag have been taken out. So, as long as somebody is working on that flag somehow, you know, it's delaying the capture, or speeding it up, or helping speed it up, something like that. So that's just something you can be aware of. A 
course, all six of these, and all six of the assault maps I'm going to show you are victories for me. Oh gosh. <laughs> Starting to think having your gunship in close isn't such a good idea anymore, because that means that the non-anti-air units can shoot you. Now you might notice a little... I, I think I talked about this during the co-op videos, but you might notice a little bit of delay between me shooting at an enemy and its health bar going down. That's due to lag. Uh, on online isn't perfect with this game, but they did a really good job with it in my opinion. The lag is only limp... Uh, there's only lag with the uh, life bars, which I guess is bad because life bars are kind of important, but still, I think they did a good job with online. Not that it will ever be like this anymore because now you have to use uh, fan servers. I've never really tried one of the fan-made servers, though. I wonder how laggy it is compared to this. Hopefully not very much. Or even better. If the lag were almost non-existent, that would be very nice. So that was a pretty simple map and a pretty simple win. Yeah, this is very obviously Solar Empire territory because it's called Edo Island. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no real scoring system for assault maps, but I guess there's no way you could score the players. Uh, aside from time taken, enemies destroyed, but that would be pointless because there's already a binary win-loss objective. Next up is another reference. Shoutouts to destroy all humans. Let's see, I don't really like this map a whole lot because it really favors the attacker. Although... Hmm. Well, you'll see. Let's just say that there are more destructible objectives. Like, all the maps have destructible objectives, which is not good in my opinion. Destructible objectives are not something you want to overuse because, you know, the enemy could just pick a sniping spot and shoot from long range, out of danger. Considering that Exylvania has artillery in this map, uh, yeah. So we've got to shoot down bombers that are, oddly enough, not in the sky, they're on the ground, go figure. Then we need to destroy radar rays, and then finally another HQ capture. Ah, good old Commandant Ubel humor. Much better now that we're out of Franken Uber mode. Or whatever he was supposed to be in. So the artillery are helpful for taking out those MG towers there. I should note that the player is never allowed to control their own MG towers. You you can't do it. I don't know why. I guess they don't I guess the developers didn't want to bother players with managing the MG towers because Every time it got destroyed, the player would have to send yet another infantry unit into it. Or, I guess since MG Towers don't respawn, uh, it would just be pointless to have to waste an infantry unit on them anyways. Oh well, something like that. This time around, Tundra has the gunships and I've got the anti-air unit. It's important to have it taken out because it's the only... Well, anything on the, in the Tundra's Battalion is a threat to your artillery. They have light tanks. So, so really, you've just got to protect your artillery and you're all done. The artillery can destroy these objectives pretty easily on their own. So pick a spot and don't stop shooting. Although I have to admit, since all of your units respawn any, uh, anyways, there's nothing stopping you from just rushing each destructible objective. Like, I am right here. Just circle around it and fire with the Assault Veteran. You'll destroy it eventually. Especially if that artillery gets to work. Boom. 
Just one more bomber to go. And of course, you can go around the bomber and shoot at it from behind if you want, because for some reason all of the sandbags are placed in front of the bomber. Yeah, nobody would ever try and attack it from behind. That'd be just silly. So are my artillery going to shoot at that thing anytime soon? Or are they getting blown up? Come on, any day now. There we go. Next up are the radar arrays, and this is the really uh, interesting part of the map in my opinion, because look at where the uh, respawn point is placed when you get to this part. Right across the bridge, right? Well, that means that since your artillery are going to be respawning there, why not just wait there and shoot out all of the radar arrays with your artillery while the rest of your battalion defends them? Yeah. Of course, if Tundra has the upper hand, they can spawn camp there for a few minutes. But yeah, just shoot at all of the radar arrays with the artillery. I'm pretty sure the artillery can reach all four radar arrays. One of them might be just out of reach. Okay, that's one down. Oh, and since our infantry are uh, in the middle of here anyways... It's not exactly a gr This isn't exactly the greatest map in the world to me because, you know, you have, uh, for the first two objectives, all four destructible objects are, like, spread out so that you either spread yourself thin and get run over or you just, like... This is from the defender's point of view. Like, either, he, either Tundra can spread themselves out, or just defend one objective at a time and watch as the other three get destroyed. Not exactly the best map design, in my opinion. Just one radar array left, and then we can focus on the HQ. Really, the destructible objectives, those are the formalities. The real battle is at the HQ, the destructible objectives there are just to see how much time the attacker has in order to take down the HQ. That's that's kind of why I don't like assault mode too much. I mean, it it was okay. They they made an honest effort to balance these maps. Well, unless we're talking about uh, a certain map, which we'll get to. Anyhow, I guess imbalances are bound to happen, anyways. Now that our artillery has respawned, let's take out these MG towers so that we can get to their HQ. Now, you won't see it in this video, so I'll tell you right now that the Tundra respawn point is like way behind the HQ. They couldn't put it at the HQ because then it would be too easy to spawn camp. But still, putting it so far away from the HQ, I don't think that was a good idea either. And this happens a lot. They try to avoid spawn camping, but it doesn't always work out the way you we would want it to, which is why I really want to see, well, I guess it would be pointless to make custom maps anymore due to the online modes being shut down, but hey, I, I guess it was fun while it lasted. Or it would have been fun while it lasted. This is turning out to be a rather uh, simple HQ capture. The flag is already halfway there. Is that anti-air vehicle going to shoot the gunship, though? Seriously. There we go. I also don't like that every time your infantry respawns, you have to reorder them to take the flag. Like, if, a, if an infantry dies while taking the flag, and it respawns, it won't be taking the flag anymore. That doesn't... it doesn't work that way for the defender. If a unit dies defending the HQ, then it will respawn and immediately begin defending the HQ again. Or at least when it walks up to it. So that's unfortunate, but I have almost taken their HQ. Oh no, they're lowering the flag! What do I do? They have flame veterans. That ain't cool. This is actually a bad position for the artillery to be. 
Anybody who plays this map again somehow, take notice. Your artillery are not meant to be at the HQ. Keep them to where they can fire at things decently. So is that flag almost taken out yet? No. We have to get back up to it first. No, don't order all of the units to attack the gunship. That's silly. Ah, they're re-raising the flag. Wonderful. I also noticed that the flag lags, much like the life bars do. But that's uh, less of a problem. If you don't see any targets in range when you're controlling the artillery, you can actually shoot at the artillery's flag itself, and that will usually hit an enemy or two, I've noticed, particularly if they're trying to re-raise their flag. That's a nice surprise. So yeah. Two minutes left and we're almost there. If only I could lock onto that tank. Thank you. Ah, it's destroyed already as soon as I shoot at it. Uh, them's the brakes. You can also tell which enemy is being controlled by the other player, which is also helpful because if you take them out, it takes a moment for them to control transfer into a new unit, just like it does whenever you get destroyed, so that's another tactic to keep in mind. We're almost there. Yeah, see, now it's going to take a couple of seconds for the, for those light tanks to get to us, to get to the flag. And we'll have a head start on their flag by the time they get here. You can even shoot them out with the artillery. That's another thing. Putting the respawn points so far away from the HQ means that you can take some shots at them as they're coming towards you if your artillery is still up and running. Artillery was not the best uh, choice for this game mode. Could have at least given Tundra an artillery. Maybe that would be too samey, but whatever. Come on, guys, hurry it up. There's only 20 seconds left, you guys. We've got to re raise the flag. We've almost got it. Oh, 10 seconds left. Five, four, all oh, with four seconds left. That's beautiful. At least that was an, uh, that'll excite a couple of people at least. So that's assault mode. We've got four more assault maps to cover before we move on to the final mo game mode, skirmish mode. So until then, Let's hope the map design doesn't get much worse.